Today's video is going to be about the 10 things that I completed in March. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts, a channel all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. We're going to kick off this video with tops. The first top that I made in the month of March is the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl Cardigan. This cardigan comes in sizes 1 to 15 and I made the size 2, shortening the sleeves by 2 inches. It also has three different sleeve views, a short sleeve, a regular long sleeve, and a balloon style long sleeve, and I made the balloon sleeve. The fabric that I used is a yellow sweater rib knit that I got from Stylemaker Fabrics over Black Friday. It's a really gorgeous, soft fabric, and it was perfect for this particular application, and I used about two yards. I found this pattern really easy to put together. I've never actually sewn a pattern from Tilly and the Buttons before, but the instructions were good. I didn't have any difficulties putting it together. The only things that I would do differently next time is instead of using interfacing to reinforce the neckband, I'd probably use clear elastic because I've used that method before and I like the way that it looks a little bit better than having that interfacing showing on the inside of the garment. And also, this was my own fault, but I should have basted the ends of the neckband before I actually surged it because I did find that my serger kind of shifted a little bit and so the ends don't completely line up perfectly, but that is definitely something that I could fix next time. I made this particular garment for the Sew Yellow for Endo challenge hosted by Jess of Sew What If I Sew, and I'm really happy with this make, and I really like this pattern. I like that it can be worn as a cardigan or as a top. In this clip, I'm wearing it over my Style of Patterns Galena dress, and I love the way that it looks layered over the dress, but I also have worn it on over a tank top with jeans, and I can just see myself wearing this and reaching for it over and over again, actually probably through the whole year. It's a nice light layer, and I definitely want to make this pattern again. I would actually like to make all three of the views because I think that it could take you throughout the seasons. So I think this is, that this is a really good pattern, and I'm so happy that I made it up. The second top that I completed in March is the Closet Core Tee. This comes in sizes 0 to 32, and I made the size 2, but I graded up to a 4 at the underarm and then back to a 2 at the chest level. I used a cotton spandex jersey from Stylemaker Fabrics in a dusty pink color, and I made the short sleeve with the cropped version. This was one of my makes for the Sew Frugal 22 challenge. I do have an entire video devoted to the makes from this challenge, so I'm not going to go into too much detail in this particular video. So for this clip, I have it styled with jeans. I'm wearing my Madewell skinny jeans and my white sneakers for just a casual weekend throw on look. And I really do like this top and I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it in the spring and summer and I could see myself making it again. The next top on my list is the IM Patterns Rainbow Hoodie. This comes in sizes 34 to 52 and I made the size 36 and I shortened the sleeves by two and a half inches. The fabric that I used is a cotton spandex French terry that I got from Surge Fabrics, again in a mauve dusty pink kind of color. I'm really feeling that color right now. And I did actually make um, a matching pair of joggers that I will get to in just a moment. For the options, because this pattern comes with so many different options, I chose the version with the cuffs and the bands. I chose the classic hood, not the overlap and I added a kangaroo pocket and I made the standard length. I really love the way that this hoodie turned out. It's going to be an instant classic and I can see myself making this pattern over and over again. The next time that I make it, I would consider making a couple of different adjustments. So first of all, I think that instead of doing the classic hood, I would do the overlapping hood because I just think I would like the look of that a little bit better. And also, I'm very seriously considering cropping it a little bit, so I'm a little bit torn because the standard length is great for wearing um, long over leggings, but I think for my everyday life, because I tend to wear high-waisted pants a lot, I think that cropping it a little bit might work better for my wardrobe. But I do like this version in the standard length, and I could see myself making it occasionally and maybe mostly making a more cropped version. I really do like how this hoodie came out. I can see myself wearing it over and over again, and I will definitely make more in the future. I think this might become my go-to hoodie pattern. It's not lined, which is, I actually do not like lined hoodies. So I just really like the pattern, and I can definitely see myself making it over and over again. So the last make on my tops list for March is the Chalk and Notch Wren blouse. 
This top comes in sizes 0 to 30 and there's two bust cup options. I made the size 0 in the AB cup and I did size down one size from my uh, actual body measurements. And I used for fabric the Dashwood Studio Cotton Lawn from Minerva. Now this was part of my March plans and I had asked for feedback when choosing between two different cotton lawn fabrics. And the majority of people had chosen the light background floral that I got from Spoonflower. But I, instead I chose this particular fabric, the navy background with the paint strokes because I really wanted to make a feature of that lantern sleeve. And I knew that because my print was directional, I could shift the direction of that lower sleeve and make it a design feature. So that's why I really wanted to use that fabric. And also I had one and a half meters of this for the Ren blouse, which was a more appropriate um, fabric length. The other For the other fabric, I had two yards. So I felt like I'd be wasting more if I used that fabric instead of this one. So I feel like, honestly, I did a really good job sewing this with the construction and the fabric choice and the fabric layout. Um, I'm really happy with the construction of it. It was pretty easy to put together, but I'm gonna be honest with you, this is not my favorite top. I wish that I liked it more than I did. I just don't think that the fullness of the short puffy sleeve really works for my body type. I think that it looks so adorable on other people, but on me, I just feel like I look too broad shouldered. And I almost think that the juxtaposition of having like the more masculine, um, fuller shoulder looks almost strange with the very girly feminine puffy sleeve. And I just think that it's not a good look for me. Now I'm not crossing this pattern off of my list entirely because I do think that I could make the long sleeve version. I've made plenty of full sleeve um, tops and dresses that have the longer sleeve and I don't feel that I look as broad shouldered in those tops, maybe because it's a little bit more balanced, but anytime I've made a puff shoulder sleeve with short sleeves, I always regret it. So unfortunately, I don't know how much I'm gonna wear this top. I am gonna put it in my wardrobe and try it out and maybe it'll grow on me, but I just don't really like the way that it looks. In this clip, I have styled it tucked in my boot cut jeans with some simple nude mules on. And again, I just feel like it, it looks too uh, top heavy, so I don't love the way that it looks, but I also don't really like how it looks untucked either. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that it's a really pretty top, but I just don't know if it's my style. Now, before we move on to bottoms, I do just want to mention that I have started posting a poll towards the end of every month in my community tab, where I lay out a list of finished makes from the month and I ask you guys what you wanna see a full detailed review of. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time to make full reviews of every single garment that I make, but I do wanna give you guys the videos that you wanna see. So if you are interested in choosing which makes that you wanna see a more detailed review, I would recommend checking out my community tab towards the end of the month and make sure you vote in that poll so that you can have a say in what gets a full review. The first time that I did this, I did the Cameron button up shirt was the winner. And then this time around my so frugal makes were the winner. And so I do listen to you guys. So your feedback's really important to me. And so I would love it if you would vote in the polls when I post them. Moving on to bottoms. First on my list is the Anna Allen Persephone pants. This was part of my March plans. And this pattern comes in sizes zero to 20. Now, I can't exactly tell you what size that I made because I've made this pattern once before and I made extensive adjustments to it. But unfortunately, my original pants no longer fit me. I've gotten a little bit larger since I made them in 2020. But my original modified pattern was at least in the ballpark of the kinds of adjustments that I would need to make. So rather than starting all the way from scratch, I just traced out the pattern that I had modified the first time and then made further adjustments to it and made a couple of muslins to get a better fit this time around. So that's why I can't really tell you what size that I made. I started with originally a size zero at the waist and a size two at the hip, but like I just said, that pattern doesn't fit me anymore because it's too small. So maybe in the ballpark of a size two at the waist and a size four at the hip, but again, that's just an estimate. 
In addition to sizing up, I did make some further design changes this time around. So I found that on my first pair of Persephone's, having those inset pockets in the waistband were completely useless because I just couldn't ever get my hand in them. So I replaced them this time around with the front patch pockets that are a free add-on that you can download from Anna Allen's website. I also lengthened the pants to full length because I've been finding lately that cropped pants, I think I'm just over them because I think I'm probably tired of my socks sticking out at the bottom of my pants all the time. So I did go ahead and lengthen them to floor length um, and I can wear them with sneakers or with uh, low heels. And I do like that length a lot better. The fabric that I used for this is different from what I was going to use originally that I showed in my plans video. Originally, I was going to use a red stretch denim, but when I went to cut it out, I realized that that particular fabric has a lot of stretch in it, probably about 30 to 35%. And I just thought that that was gonna to be too stretchy for this pattern, which is meant for non-stretch wovens. So I switched it out for a 10 ounce bull denim that I got from Blackbird Fabrics in a wine color. It's a beautiful shade of red. It's just slightly darker than what I was going to use originally. So I was happy to just go ahead and swap that out. I also found that this fabric was extremely soft and easy to work with. It has a little bit more drape than I'm used to with a denim. I think probably because it's not indigo dyed, the indigo kind of makes it a little bit stiff. This fabric was really soft and pliable to work with. I did make these pants for a challenge. I did so recreate the look on Instagram and I'm really happy with how my make turned out. I will say that I have a little bit of a fit issue with the waist. So I've been noticing in the past few years, I think that my waist fluctuates quite a bit during the day. Now I don't remember this being an issue when I was younger, but maybe it's just a function of age or I don't know. But I definitely find now that when I get up in the morning and I put on my pants that they seem loose, but over the course of the day, they get tighter and tighter. And often when I come home from work, I'm ready to just rip them off my body and put on something with an elastic waist. So this pair was no exception. I do find that when I put them on the, in the morning, they do seem a little bit loose. I feel like I need to wear a belt with them, but by the end of the day, I do find that they are comfortable. So I was thinking about to combat that issue next time. Um, this was actually a piece of advice that was given to me in the pants fitting class that I took with Jen Stern. I mentioned that issue in the class and she suggested adding some elastic to the back waistband of your pants, not enough to gather it, but just ever so slightly shorter than the back waistband length. And that way, having that elastic in the back could enable the pants to kind of grow with you over the course of the day. And I really do wanna try that. I think honestly, I just forgot about it until I finished these pants and then was like, oh yeah, I've got that waistline problem. But if I were to make these again, I would try to do that with the elastic to see if that makes a difference. In this clip, I have styled the pants with one of my Pattern Emporium Keep It Simple Babe turtlenecks. This one is the taupe and black stripe rayon turtleneck. I have it tucked in and I'm wearing my tan Nisolo sneakers. I really like the way that the high-waisted pants with the wide legs look with a nice fitted turtleneck. I think that these pants are gonna be really versatile. I think that they can be worn all year long and I love the bright red color. It goes with so many things in my wardrobe, probably because red is my favorite color, so I do have a lot of things that coordinate with it and I really do like these pants. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue to make the Persephone's. Originally, I was thinking that it would be my go-to wide leg pant pattern and I do like the shape of the legs. The issue that I have with the Persephone's is that because there's no side seams, that takes away a little bit of a, a fitting seam that you could use to aid with fitting. And also, I just find that the front pocket situation is not my favorite. Those patch pockets are very small and I find them difficult to put my hand in. However, I don't really wanna make them too much larger because I think that visually they would take up way too much of the pants. So I'm just not really sure because of the pocket situation, um, maybe I'd be better off trying a different wide leg pant, but I don't know. I do like the way that these look um, and I have taken the time to fit them. I think the fit is pretty good, although not perfect. Um, so I may stick with it or I might try something else next time. Next up is the Butterick 6388 Joggers Hack. Now this is my third time making this particular hack. 
Essentially, I had purchased the True Bias Hudson pants many years ago and I've tried so many times to get them to fit my body, but they just the pattern just doesn't work well with my body shape. So rather than trying to fight with that pattern, I actually decided to use the Butterick pattern, which fits me relatively well with just a, a small number of adjustments. And I just hacked the Butterick pattern to look more like the True Bias Hudson. So this pattern comes in sizes 4 to 26 and it is a wardrobe pattern and like I said it doesn't really look like my pants because I did change the design of it. But I do actually think that the pleated pants look really nice. I have made that version and I think that it's nice and work appropriate um, but I did change it up to look more casual. I use the same cotton spandex fringe terry from Surge that I used for my I am rainbow hoodie. It's meant to be a matching set. And I do find that these joggers are extremely comfortable. They're definitely more lightweight than some of my other joggers, so they're perfect for spring. And in this clip, I have modeled it with a very old, ready-to-wear, old navy linen striped t-shirt. And I actually really like the way that the burgundy looks with the mauve color. And I just styled it with some simple white sneakers. It's a great spring outfit that I would use if I were just gonna run out to the grocery store or do errands or something. So my last bottom in the month of March is the Little Pomegranate Sabina skirt. This comes in sizes 6 to 32 and I made the size 6 and I shortened the skirt by 3 inches. Now I did size down one size from my body measurements and I think that that was a really good decision. I used a Cloud9 rayon fabric and a blue floral print. I think that it's a really beautiful fabric. And this was part of my So Frugal 22 challenge so I do have a full review of this up on my channel. And in this clip, I have styled it in a transitional way with my hand spun sweater and I have it just gently tucked into the front of the skirt. And then I'm wearing my tan mules. And I actually really like the way that this looks. It's very romantic, very soft. And um, I do think that I'm gonna get quite a bit of wear out of the skirt when the weather warms up. If you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate it so much if you would hit the like button because it helps new viewers find my channel. Thank you so much. So last up are things that I made for my vacation. I did a hack of the Vicky Sews Veronica top. This comes in sizes 34 to 46 and I made the size 36 in the shortest height range. The fabric that I used was a rib knit from Joanne. I believe it's a rayon blend. And this fabric was perfect for this application because it's very thick and it doesn't show lumps and bumps. And so I was really happy with my fabric choice. This hack was pretty much the easiest hack to execute in all of the hacks. All I did was I lengthened the top by 15 inches. And as a guideline, there is a true bias hack for how to make the Nico into a form-fitting bodycon dress. And I read that tutorial and I basically used that as my guideline to extend the Veronica. Um, I think basically you just make it a little bit longer and then you do um, bring it in at the sides just a little bit so that it hugs your curves. Very, very easy to do. And then I constructed it according to the Vicky Sews instructions. I did use a zigzag stitch to finish off my seams instead of getting out my cover stitch and that was purely because I was being lazy. And I am absolutely thrilled with how this dress came out. I think that it's going to be a classic, a staple in my wardrobe. It's the perfect little black dress for me. And I can already think of so many different ways that I would want to wear it. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a styling video because I just have so many different ideas. I think I could probably do an entire video with different ways to dress this up or dress it down. In this clip, I kept it really simple so that you could see the shape of the dress. And I just wore it on its own with a statement necklace and some nude heels. And I think that this would be perfect for date night. Um, it's a beautiful dress. I'm excited to take it on my vacation. I think that I can wear it as a beach cover up or wear it out to dinner. There's just so many different things that I can do with it. And I'm so happy that I added this dress to my wardrobe. So my last two makes for the month were both swimsuits. I used three different patterns. I used the Helen's Closet Sandpiper Swimsuit, the Friday Pattern Company Vernazza Two-Piece, and the So You're Happy Liz Bralette. Now I'm not actually going to get into the details of this because I don't have any new style clips to show you. If you want to know more about my experience of sewing swimwear for the first time, I'm just going to point you to this video because I go into great detail and I do show my swimsuits at the end. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that you take time out of your day to watch my videos. 
and I will see you next time.